CataractCoach.com. Fibrotic dense white cataract using micro scissors to cut the anterior capsule. Our guest surgeon is Dr. Hamane Goyle from New York City. So I'll speed up the video and show it at five times normal speed. This is a patient with a long-standing dense white cataract. After tripan blue dye staining, the cystome is being used to start a capsulorexis. And you can see there centrally that big white area is a plaque. And so it was started with the cystome and now grabbed with the utrata forceps. And as it's brought around, it just gets stuck at that one spot. There's some fibrotic material that's holding the anterior lens capsule to the calcified cortex. So now Dr. Goyle is going to use these 25 gauge or 23 gauge retinal scissors through the paracentesis to make a small incision there at the point where it's stuck. By doing this, she's able to continue the capsulorexis and move around in a circular fashion. And notice the way that the curve of the retina forceps is, it's aligned with the curve of the rexus. So now completing the capsulorexis, which looks just about perfect, and bringing it over and finishing it up, and again, it gets stuck. So more viscoelastic to the rescue here, and then grabbing it with the forceps, and trying to complete it. And if it doesn't complete, well, the option is to go back to the retina scissors. So a little more viscoelastic here going in. Now making another entry site and coming with the scissors to cut it and complete the rexus. So this is a type of white cataract where there is hardening of the lens cortex and it becomes adherent to the capsule. Not only the anterior capsule, but you'll see in this case adhere to the posterior capsule or even the lens capsular bag equator all around the capsule. So going in with a phaco probe here, the goal is of course, remove as much of the cataract as we can. So the technique here is gonna to be to do a groove down the middle. And this is very effective. This ends up debulking that central endonucleus, which is the densest part. A little bit of a separation there to make sure we have a, two uh, good heminuclear halves. A little more viscoelastic as a protective agent. That's always a smart move. And then rotating this and continuing that groove in the other direction and then splitting it apart. And now the remaining pieces can be brought up and chopped. So stop and chop technique, very effective. And this goes well. Now when we look here, it looks like there's some epinuclear shell. The nucleus has been removed in earnest. But we now need to remove the remainder of this material. So going with this, uh, IA probe and try to aspirate it. Now the chopper's ready in the second hand to help push any pieces down the port. And the cleanup goes pretty well, but there's this one area between the paracentesis and the main incision where there is just a big opaque plaque. That's also the spot where we noticed that the anterior capsule was stuck. So the central visual axis is nice and clear. So we can put our lens in and then the question remains, how to remove the rest of this opaque area? Now, a couple options. You can try to pick at it and scrape it and see if you can dissect it off. That may not be so effective because you saw how difficult it was to remove from the anterior capsule. And we're pulling here at the equator, we may be more likely to damage the zonules. So we can also just insert our lens dial that into position and notice that the visual axis is clear. Now with the lens uh, ho holding open the capsule, we can go in and try to remove more. So now using a bimanual split of the eye handpiece to really get in there and try to polish off as much of the opacity as possible. And it works pretty well to a degree, but there's certain areas like this whitish patch that are just not gonna come off. And the better move here which is what Dr. Goyle recommends is let the patient heal up and come back into a YAG laser capsulotomy later. And that's a great idea. So already we've made a humongous difference in the patient's vision, going from hand motion vision to quite clear normal vision here with a good central visual axis that's completely free of opacities. The, res the ex existing or remaining opacities here in the periphery are not likely gonna affect the vision and those can be left alone so the eye can heal up. And after you have complete capsule contraction over the course of about two or three months, 
then you can come back and do a conservative YAG laser capsulotomy if you feel you need it. Now, the patient may have a little bit more post-op inflammation, so certainly using steroids for a longer period of time is going to be useful here. I want to thank Dr. Goyle for a very nice case, and you too can submit your cases. Go to cataractcoach.com, our teaching website, click on the link, and I want to learn from you.